this verse is coming from Allah so why would he say do that to his own prophet you sound ignorant no my friend let me tell you what happened the one who said that verse you said it's Allah right okay Allah making a statement a punishment and if the one is speaking this verse is Allah then Muhammad is a false prophet because this is how Muhammad he died if Muhammad is the one who made this verse obviously Muhammad he never predicted that he would die, he would die in such a way so when you say to me my friend that this is a verse made by Allah okay no problem but Allah says if Muhammad is lying I'm going to cause his death in such a way and this is how your prophet he died now you solve the problem So what this verse proving that Muhammad is a fraud, right? Now we go back to the my flowers. Thank you for your answer. Look, I will find all those things waiting for me in Jakarta, because you know, the the Muslims in Jakarta they are very peaceful. Do we have any Abdul he can answer? What people in Jakarta are doing? What is that? Is that a festival? Ah, yeah, I remember now. This is an occasion they do when my uncle Jack, he went to Jakarta and he told them about Muhammad cutting off his orta. Those who don't believe in Allah, they start dancing. You know, and they start like screaming Jack Orta, Jack Orta, Jack Orta, and then you know, by by time it became Jakarta. Now I remember I was saying to myself, what is the what they are doing? But now like the memory come back, you know, like flashback, you know, flashback, like, beep, beep, flash, you know. So now I remember, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. But I I guarantee you that none of those people are Muslim because they look happy. I guarantee you that. I don't know about the country, anything. Anyway, anyway, I mean, except my uncle Jack, he went to Orta, and then he called Jack Orta, you know, etc. You know, but those people they look happy, and there's no way they are Muslims. Muslims we scream in Takbir, Allah Akbar. You know, what is this? Those people are dancing; they are happy. You know? No one want to refute me. Trust me, my friend. Muslim, they can refute me so easy. But because they are kind, they don't want to do it. It's embarrassing for me. So they don't want to hurt my feeling. That's all. I'm assuring you that. Uncle Jack from Orta, he can prove it. So you are proving the Quran is a miracle? Okay, hold on. Guys, I approve the Quran is a miracle by his prophet proven to be a false. <laughs> Look at the intelligence. We just showed him a verse in the Quran proving that Muhammad, if he lie, Allah will cut his artery. And then the guy and Muhammad, he accept, he's a Muhammad, he claim that he died in this such a way. So now this genius saying, Christian Prince, so you are proving that the Quran is a miracle because Allah made his will come through. You agree to it, Abdul? But this is a proof that Muhammad is a fraud. <laughs> Which means the whole Quran is a fraud. Which means Muhammad the stupid, he made a verse claiming if he is lying, this will happen to him. And then this is what happened to him to get him busted. So this is a miracle for you. <laughs> genius. You know what? You are not a genius. You are genius. I will tell you a story about genius. genius there's a guy, he was now Mr. Genie, you know? And this guy was like, he looked funny, you know? Like, you know, he's this genie. So he's like, uh, uh, but he was not, not wearing a bikini or anything, you know? But he looked like kind of funny. So Genie, uh, you know, he was walking in uh, Jakarta. And then uh, the people, they saw him, he was naked. He's not wearing a bikini, I told you. So he was naked and like, he is so small and he's very funny. So they say, uh, they said, Genie, and he said, yes. You know because he thought they are calling him you know so like what like how in the world 
Like, okay, so he, they said, Genie, and everybody, and, and he said, yes. So those people, they correct the name, they start, 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 start calling him genius. And this is where the word genius is, is coming from. And you are a genius. So you are proving that the Quran is a miracle because Allah <laughs> made this will come true. What he made come true, Muhammad is a fraud. Look at this genius, man. He, uh, uh, what's your name? What was his name? I'm going to make you an admin. What do you think? I mean, come on, you deserve it. You as a Muslim, my friend, you get the title of a genius. And that to qualify you to be an admin in my chat. I cannot be more thankful mean but Allah did not cut his artery you say that Jewish women did <laughs> genius again Abdul is it the Quran says no bad things can happen to you except by the permission of Allah what's wrong with the Muslims by the way you became an admin for real I'm telling you I just made you an admin Abdul the Jewish women is the one who killed Muhammad not Allah, but are you saying to me that people die without permission of Allah? Yeah, here we go. He became a blue now. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy. Mommy blue. Oh, mommy blue. My friend, the Muslim will hate you now. They will say you became an admin Christian Prince chat. They will make fatwa against you. Are you are happy? You have no idea what just happened to you now. <laughs> so listen, Abdul, you're a prophet who was killed by a Jew. But the Quran confirmed that no one die, no one live except by the permission of Allah. And he said spe specifically, ma min musibah. Musibah mean bad things. Is death bad for your prophet to be killed by poison like, like a rat? Ma min musibah. Happened except by the permission of Allah. Chapter 64, verse number 11. So based, my, based on this, my friend, the Jewish woman, she was used by Allah to put food poison bought from Walmart. Cheap one, like $3, $5, I don't know how much. I think she, I mean, she is a Jew. I mean, they, are, they don't spend too much money. So she bought the, the, the cheapest, uh, you know, uh, poison. She put it in the food of Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad, he ate. And then Muhammad he died. So as long there is a destiny in Islam and nobody die except by destiny and fate. So the one who killed Muhammad is Allah. And he used a Jewish woman to kill Muhammad. What say you? The one who became my admin now. Are you there? Oh, the guy is busy. Look at himself in the chat now as an admin. He's taking a, I think he's taking a selfie with it now. There's nothing wrong with being an admin uh, or being a friendly to a Christian. Ah, really? I thought that the Quran says you can't even be friend to your own family if they are the Christians. <laughs> Guys, this guy is so... I think he just took a shower. And the shower he used a Clorex. And he was doing a brainwash. You are telling me I'm wrong for being an admin or being a friendly to the Christians. So stop making false statement. You killed me, brother. What I will tell to my cousins after this now. Abdul, the Quran said, you will not find a single believer who believe in Allah and the last day will take will be even loving to his own family and his parents and his brothers and his sisters if they are opposing Allah do you see it so my friend you have no idea uh, Muqtada, are you a Muslim my friend or you are an ex-Muslim let us see Muqtada, what you want to say to us <coughs> Yo, hello, man. 
Hello, hello. How are you, my friend? Christian Prince. So, are we on live now, man? Are we on live or what? Well, we are live. Unless, nice. al unless Allah cut, unless Allah cut your orta and my orta. <laughs> oh, man, God forbid, man, God forbid. All so right, what do you want to say to us, Mister Mister Muqtada? What do you want to say? So you tell me, man. You're the one who's ho who's the ho you're the one who's the host. So you are a Muslim. So, uh, originally, yeah, man. I'm from southern Iraq. Uh, okay, so you left Islam yeah. now. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not you know very religious, man. You know, you know, either you say I'm Muslim or not Muslim. I what do you think yourself? Do you do you consider yourself a Muslim or not? Uh I mean oh shit. Well, ethnically, ideologically, no. Ideologically, no, basically. No. Yeah. Hmm. So what, what what does that mean technically, ideologically? I mean, so no. <laughs> so like like if, if somebody sees me on the street, I I or or anywhere. I probably get the stereotype that I'm a Muslim. I live in the States, in Texas. So mm. Always uh, when, when I was in school, at work, mm. I always get asked where I'm from. So I'm always, and people are under the impression that I'm from mm. Middle Eastern origins because of my accent and my name and everything else. Mm. Yeah, bro. So, so you, you, uh, I'm, I'm on live now. So all these people are watching me, man. That's interesting. That's cool, man. That's pretty cool. Well, we don't care about how many people watch. We care about how much truth we are sharing. What do you think? It's interesting, man. You know, uh, I actually got uh, four copies of the Bible. Let me see. One, two, three, four, yeah. And, and a Van Dyke in my home. Yeah, this Van Dyke is a, is a, is a bad translation, by the way. Well, then which one? The Jesuit one? You use the Jesuit one? And I don't know. I did not read, but this Van Dyke have a lot of words which is not because, really a Christian because, word. Because it uses the word Allah, right? Because you have a problem with well, it. Because oh, it has the... Yeah, but this is not really only the only point. What's the only point? What, what's the many, other point? What's the other point? Like he used the word nikah. What, I heard. What, I did not. I did not have the book, but I saw somebody saying this is what it says. So if it's there, you know, we don't have such a word in the Bible. This is shame. So this is very so hold on, hold on. false. So 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 like like let's say uh, in what context does it use that word? He he was translating uh, uh, supposedly the word marriage. Uh, he right. heard from Muslims that the word marriage for them is a word nikah, but Christians we, this is a this is a very filthy word for us to use. We don't I, use I it. I know, man, but I know the the all the churches, the Syrian and the Coptic churches approve of it, and it's translated out of the original tongues in in a word for word manner. You know what I mean? So I I don't know. I like it so. But what what what, the, what, the, what the churches they use it? Um, they, know, use the, the, they use the they use the Van Dyke. So this guy Cornelius Van Dyke was had connections okay. with. Okay, I saw I saw I saw a copy yeah. which is supposed to be corrected, right. but this is not the original then, because uh, if this is true, I did not have a book. I if that if that word so, is exist, did you see that word is exist anywhere? I don't know, man. I didn't see. It, okay, but, uh, so if that word is exist, like a, that will ruin the whole book, you know. Uh, my, my friend, my friend, my friend. Anyway, uh, translation is translation. Anyway, translation is translation. Okay. But this right. is not the topic, you know, for us. Translation. Uh, you can make translation too. Translation as a translator, you know, he do his best to translate. He can be honest. He can be a liar. He can be whatever. I want to ask you. So now you are you are saying if you walk in the street, you are like a Muslim, but you are not true. You are not a tr true believer. So what are Basically, you? Basically, no, no. Why, yeah, why, man, I, why you don't want to be a true believer? You don't believe Muhammad is a prophet? I mean, you know, not really, man. Not really. Before, before we continue, let me. I will, I will answer Abdul. He said to us in chapter sixty, verse number eight. It says Allah. He, 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 uh, he ordered the Muslim to be nice to the Muslims. Uh, my friend, uh, uh, this verse, this verse is about fighting those who don't fight you don't fight them but this is abrogated you go to the chapter of atoba it's called bara ah. the original name of atoba is called bara ah. bara ah, i mean allah so allah he washed the hands of the muslims from all the agreement to not to fight those who don't fight them that's why he says go and attack and fight those who don't believe in allah so this verse is abrogated and you are a fool sorry uh, sorry my friend Muqtada. i was answering this this I so, so Muqtara, what make you leave uh, Islam? You know, what is exactly make you? Um, I mean, uh, I haven't really, uh, you know, I was, you know, just taught as a kid, just memorize, you know, the normal, regular stuff. But I was, I was raised in the state, and yeah. um, 
I, I served in the Navy for oh, right. a couple of years. And when I was uh, in service, we had on Sunday the opportunity to go to church. Wonderful. All right. So I picked up a Bible. It was the ESV at first uh, uh, from the chapel. And I went to the Protestant services because, you know, the, the chaplains, the, the actual chaplains in the military were, you know, usually the ones that come and present to us. Yeah. They were motivational speakers and they were chaplains. They were, uh, I, I know. I, I've, been in the, I've been in the army myself. I know. Okay. That's cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I'll go there and, you know, it's, it's a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, you, know, uh, you know. So you did not decide to become a Christian yet? Uh, I haven't been baptized, but. I uh, actually, you know, my my faith is not that strong, but I I do believe in it. I do believe the Bible. Yeah. So do you, do you, do you believe that Jesus is Lord? Yes, I mean. I mean to that, you know. So you are you are a Christian I mean, by heart. Then uh, what good, is good. what what is missing then is just to do baptism, if you baptism, believe in Jesus right. as your Savior. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, I mean I mean I mean I'm sorry that I came up. I, I mean. If uh, you know you only take calls from Muslims or not, but you know it's just interesting. I mean, if nobody's willing to call you, then yeah, it's okay. Not, right? Actually, I allow I, I allow ex-Muslim to call me too. No problem. That's cool, yeah. man. But I'm you know anyway, I'm happy for you. What about That's your cool. family? Did they accept the Messiah or not yet? Nope. They actually you know in contempt of it. They okay. think I'm dumb and they think I'm stupid. But why you don't invite yeah. them to talk to me? What do you think? Heck no, man. No? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, uh, you know, but they're they're not very friendly to these conversations, and they think it's taboo, and and you know, and and other than that, it's it's you know, you know, you know how it is, man. You're from, like, obviously, from that area, of the country, yeah. and uh, so your your parents they speak Arabic, they don't speak English, yeah, yeah, yeah true in Arabic, yeah, yeah. So they speak they speak English too, but. You know, and inviting them to to in, in this platform is 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 very is not a good idea, man. Yeah. Yeah. But well, uh, I don't know yeah, if you if you want tell them uh, 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 Christian prince invite you and he says shlona kaiuni shlona shlona kaiuni shlona. Are you Iraqi? Are you Iraqi? Huh? Are you Iraqi? I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just I, I would not say. You don't, want to any, that. Any... you don't want to disclose that, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's oh, whatever, yeah. man. That's but cool, I, man. Oh, but yeah. I, you know, anyway. Mashallah. So, That's good. so, so, like, uh, you, you said it used the word nikah. What, what, uh, sifr and ishah, or what book can, th does that? I don't, you know, I don't remember one, really what the, translation, you know, you but, wanna, uh, but it's going to appear supposedly in the word instead of the word, uh, uh, you know, I, I saw in the internet a translation for that book. It's corrected. So mm -hmm. that word does not exist no more. Oh, no, but no. they say, well, I don't know, I don't have the original book. They say, that in the original book, that word is exist. So I'm not sure. That's why I'm asking you if you saw that word or not. No, I, I don't, man. I don't, but, I don't, I don't but, have but, it. you know, my, I had a friend called, uh, you know, do you know a guy named Shamon Hido or, or, or Shamon Hido? Like, do, do you know a guy no. with, with that name? He's, he's no. from Syrian origins. He does Christian apologetics in Arabic. He okay. speaks Syriac or Aramaic. He, he's mm -hmm. a Syriac from Syria. Mm -hmm. And he has these Syriac manuscripts. He said he compared uh, the Van Dyke to it, and he said it is legit. So he likes yeah, but, it. Uh, but, the, but the word, but the word uh, Nikah is not legit. I mean, I don't know, man. Yeah. I, don't know. I so mean, maybe, I don't know. I so maybe, maybe, he have, I may, maybe he have the version of... Uh, uh, the corrected one I saw it on the internet which is mm. they, they are taking off all those words which is not not right but anyway my friend there is nothing it's called really translation is legit in Arabic because all of them they are using the word so, Allah. What, what about the Jesuits the Jesuits translation all there's the, the, translation, or the Jesuit. all the translation is not correct you have to replace any translation using the word Allah has to take to be taken off why man it's it's literally God for Arabic and in Hebrew no, there's the word, Elohim, the word Allah is, the word Allah no the word Allah is not an Arabic word, number one. And How is it? What is yeah, it? Simply, it's taken even from the Aramaic, but this is not Allah, it's Lah. So, the, the Al, Lah, Al is a word meaning God. Lah is the name of the God. This is the moon God. Uh, for, for us as a Christians, we have, uh, we use the word Rab, you know, like you say, Rabbi, Rabbi. The Lord, you know? but that's the, that's Rab. for the Lord. So the no. Lord would be Rab. Lord is God. You know, we don't have no. God. Our, no, no, no. Our God, Lord my is, friend. Our Lord, God, Lord is Allah. like Rab, right? It's like Master. It's, it's no, like... no, 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 no. The, the, right. word, the word Rab can be used for a Master if you mean a Master. You know, if you 
But if you mean even a rabbi, you call him rabbi, a man, you know, a teacher. Right. But, but rab, when you say rab, though is like Lord though, because uh, for 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 like uh, in the Old Testament, for example, that man uh, in the Book of Kings, uh, the Ahab's uh, servant, he calls Elijah my Lord. Sarah hmm. calls uh, Abraham. Yeah, because Lord. He's, a, he's a servant. So, yeah. Okay. Right, he's a servant. So somebody, the Lord somebody have authority. in Arabic is is actually a rub. So like, it's okay. legitimate, uh, man. Uh, but how Allah you know? Is, is God uh, no, is basically... You see, you are not the same. Right. The word raw depends mm. in the sentence. You know if it's mm. for God or it is for a man. As simple as that, a normal person. So when you speak about God and you say the word rub, that means you are talking about the word God. As simple as that. When you are speaking to a person like you and he called him rub, maybe he is your master or he is your uh, someone in charge of you. This is what it means, authority. But uh, in religious meaning, it means God. Same time, we have tons of words, and the Bible is so clearly that when Moses he he, he met with the uh, with the Lord, uh, he asked him, "What I will tell my people? What's your name?" He said, "Go to them and tell them I am who I am." He did not say Allah. He did not say even Il. He did not even say uh, the word uh, Elohim. You know. So he said he said Yahweh though he said yeah, W H yeah, he, uh, yeah yeah so it it mean it but, but this is not a name. This is a sentence mean I am who I am so but, for for a person who doesn't speak the language you might think that this is a this is a, a a foreign name but in fact it's a sentence mean I am who I am so even the Bible does not give a name for God why because there's no name can describe him and there's no name can contain him and there's no language can really fit for his name so you will see this is why you see that the, the Jews they they have many words for God but none of them is a name for God. As an example, I say Adonai, Al Shaddadi, etc. But those Hashem, are not. Right. Yeah, Hashem. Hashem the name. Yeah, but those right. are not really names. No, those are not names. It's just right. they, they avoid uh, using names because he is so holy to give him a name. And this is what this is the only description God he gave himself. The only Jesus, name we yeah. have, the only name what we have for God is when he come as a man, as the Messiah. That is the Messiah. Jesus Christ. And even right. that one is not a name. Even Yeshua is not a name. Even Mikhail is not a name. Even Gabriel is not a name. Even Jerusalem is not a name. But, but these even are, Abraham uh, is not a name. Even Adam is not a name. So all the names in the Bible are not names, really. Our sentence, they meant something. Like when you say Israel, there's no, there's no person whose name is Israel. But Jacob, this is a, I mean, it's but, Jacob, right? Yeah. Uh, even Jacob is not a name, really. It's a, it is it is a, it's a it, you can go check you will see that the Bible is an amazing book. Everyone he yeah, was given a name, book. yeah. Everyone was given a name which is a description of his his story. As an example, Moses, Moshe, the one who was drowning, or, or Moses, you know, right, right. yeah, the one who was drowning or the one who saved from drowning. Abraham is the one who crossed the other side. Uh, the same for Yeshua, the same as Gabriel, the same as Mikael. So those are not names. We don't have names in the Bible. We have description of individuals. You know what I mean? I don't know, bro. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you want to take it that way, if that's your no, no, it's not up to me to take it. It's not up to me and to you. This is how it is. This is not up to you, not up to me. I mean, is it is it endorsed by some official church? Is that teaching endorsed? But by... they are not names. Oh. Who, who said that the churches they tell you? You know, when you say yeah, this is not right. a name. My friend. So so. Okay. Uh, what what your name is? Muqtada. 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 Okay. What Muqtada mean? It means like role model for Arabic. Like Arabic okay. means. Okay. See, like role model. even your name is not a name. <laughs> I mean, it's it's whatever, man. I mean, no, it's I not. Know. No, you see, when when but in the Bible is those names are given, as right. a description of the person, not only the birth, you know. Like right. if you go and read, uh, there's there's a video you can search it, in in YouTube. It's about a secret uh, coding in the book of Genesis, Genesis 5. Mm. Go watch the video and you will see. Right. In the, actually, after you hang up on me, I'm going to play okay. it so you can understand. Good? Oh, our, it's, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's up to you, man. But uh, like uh, how, how, how I... Um... It's it's all right, man. It's it's fun. If you want to, you do whatever you want to do. So this is this is it. You want to you want to leave it at that and so do, do you have any? Do you have anything for me? Do you have any question? Uh, yeah, man. What's your favorite uh book in the Bible? I'm I'm just curious. There's nothing. It's called favorite book. No, I mean, I see. What, what your, I mean, I don't know. No, my friend. The the book is 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 not 
this is not an author writing a book and I write this and like that. But I can say to you, there is something will summarize all the law, all the gospels, all everything. Jesus, he says, love to yourself what you love to others, and this is the law. Amen. Okay. That's good. That's so, good stuff. That's good yeah. Stuff. So, and Jesus said, love your enemy and pray for That's them. Cool. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah, uh, uh, pray for those who curse you. So those they they, they summarize who is the Messiah is. All right. It's, it's good stuff. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, cool. so the the Bible is not you know like a, let us say even if we don't have the four books we have just mm -hmm. a few sentences from Jesus love your enemy, forgive the one who hurt you the one who curse you, pray for them. If somebody asks you for to walk one step, walk with him one thousand. If somebody asks you for your uh, your coat, give him your dress. So, if we have those alone, that will tell us who is Jesus. God is not a God is not a book, my friend. God is fruits, and the Messiah he come to this earth, and he showed us his fruit. The Messiah he said, from their fruits you shall know them. I mean, I mean, so I mean, you do not need a book to tell me about yourself. You can tell me all good stuff about yourself, but your fruit is ugly, right? Mm. So the all Messiah, right. he gave us the the the, uh, the guideline to be what we should be and learn how to judge without being the judge. That's good, man. All right. So, uh, I mean, I, I got one more question, man, but it's up to you if you want to answer that. So are you one of the uh, original churches? I mean, or or, or are you a pro like, what's your theology in, in I don't, on the I don't believe I don't believe in the church's names. I believe in the Messiah. I mean, so you're, you're uh, an evangelical or Protestant. You no, I don't. I, don't I just told you, I don't believe. I don't. I am not Protestant. I am not Orthodox as Orthodox oh. as uh, the name of a church or a Protestant. I prefer to be a person who is following the Messiah because those names are not really exist. The, the mm -hmm. Messiah, he created one universal church and the church is the people. It's not a priest. So, so like not, not denominational, right? I don't even believe in something called denominational. You know, I believe in Jesus. Not, not so not, not, so we good, believe, man. we follow the Messiah, no one else, no bishop, mm -hmm. no, I mean, yeah. uh, no, no one. We do not need anyone to be in the middle between us and the Lord, the Messiah. For he is our savior. So why I wanna follow a priest when I have the Lord Himself and He is a living Lord? Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's a living so, God. It's good. It's, it's yeah, good. it's it's good to listen to uh, somebody he is knowledgeable to teach you, right? He can be a priest, right. but I'm not following the priest. I'm going to follow the Messiah. So if the priest taught taught, taught wrong, I will say to him bye bye. You know, I will it's follow good, only the Lord. Yeah. So the Lord is what we follow, not sect, not a church name. We are not church worshippers. We worship God, and His name is the Lord the Messiah. Amen. All right. That's good. That's good. Well, oh, nice, to, right. nice talking to you. Nice, nice to and you. I, and I will play. I will play the video for you. Listen to it so you can see what I'm talking about about the names. Amen. Peace. Have a good day. Man. All right. Bye take bye. care. Bye. Salam you. Mark. All right. We will play a video, so people they will understand that in the Bible reading we don't have names. You know, usually, I mean, not because we are not smart, but usually uh, 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 people, they are, let us say, uh, they, don't go, they don't go deep. Muqtada, uh, 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 we have uh, our brother here, Sam Shamoon. I don't know if you know him. Uh, he would like to have you in, uh, in his Skype. So I'm going to connect you to him. Uh, I don't know how I can uh, I can do that. Let me see. I'm not sure how to do that in Skype to add somebody to the conversation. And there is an option, let us see, add a person. Okay. Uh... All right, I think we have, we are able to do it. So I just send you uh, uh, 
Sam Shamoon to contact you, Muhtadai. You can listen to him. You can talk to him if you need any help. Uh, we will go to YouTube and I will show you why we usually, we don't, you know, like, uh, we, we just take uh, words for granted as, they, as names, but in reality they are not names. The Bible is a very, very deep book. This is not the city Quran. Uh, I'm trying to find the verses. And we will play it as soon we have it. Here we go. Okay. There's another. All right, let us put it on the screen. And I want people to listen carefully so you learn. And you understand what I'm what I'm trying to say when I say in the Bible there's no names. There's no names. There's a story. There's a coding. There's a there's a uh, there's a deep information. For you, because you are a foreign person, you are reading a foreign language, so you think there are names, but in reality they are not. Another place that God appears to have laid out His plan in advance. And that's in some subtleties, and one of which I'd like to share with you in Genesis chapter 5, a genealogy. The genealogy in Genesis chapter 5 goes from Adam, the first man, down through Noah. And in Genesis chapter 5, if you wade through that, I encourage you to make a list of the names. Adam gives, uh, gave birth to Seth, Seth Enosh. Enosh Kenan, Kenan Mahalal, Mahalal Jared, Jared Enoch, Enoch Methuselah, Methuselah Lamech, and Lamech was the father of Noah. Let's take these names, ten names. But see, the problem is we need to know what the names mean. And if you have a study Bible or a source, a, a, a lexicon, what have you, you know that the name Adam means man. As you go through your Bible, when these names are typically first introduced, most of your marginal footnotes will tell you what the name means. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing, and the word Noah means rest or comfort. Now, let's read that genealogy as a sentence. Man is appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Isn't that wild? Okay, so uh, if you notice with me here, we don't have names. We have a while? story. See, we have a story. The names turn to be not names. The names to be a prophecy. Turns to be a story. That there's a person who is a man. And this person will go through certain things in, in, in life. And he is the one going to be. Come down and he is the blessed God. And through his death, people will receive comfort. And here you ask yourself, there's some names doesn't make sense, you know? I mean, why in the world anyone want to call himself his death? I mean, do you call your son his, his death? You don't. You know what I mean? Why you want to call your son such a name? So obviously, those are meant to be a message, never was a name. 
Why anyone want to call his son appointed? What does that mean? Why you want to, you know, you, you, do you like to call your son appointed? What is that? What, why you want to call somebody his name moral, moral, moral? You know, what does that mean? Why you want to call your son Sora? Why you want to call your son the blessed God? So this is not a name. Those are a message. And the rest, the same goes for everything in the Bible. Even the bad one, he have a name fit with him. So if you go and check the names, Noah, Adam, uh, all, all the names, Gabriel, Michael, Israel, Israel mean the one who struggled with God. Why he got the name? Because he got, he tested him. He struggled with God. So God, he said to him, from now on, I call you Israel. And that was for Jacob. So Abraham is not a name. Moshe is not a name. Uh, uh, all of them. And this is why I say to the Christians, don't say that God have a name. Because he don't. When he described himself to Moses, he said to him, I am who I am, which means I am the one who exists by myself. I do not need anyone to make me exist. I am your Lord. And that's it. And then that Lord, he showed himself. He showed his ability, his power, and what he can do. Because anyone he can say, I am who I am. Anyone even can say, I'm God. I can say it, you can say it. If Allah can say it, anyone can say it. So we don't follow a book of stupidity like the Quran, mean nothing. This is a very deep book. And the more you study it, the more you go reading in depth and you, you will be surprised. And it doesn't matter really how much you study. Like you can be a farmer who do not know much, still you enjoy it and you love it. And you can be a person who studies so deep and then you will enjoy it even more. Uh, do we have any, uh, Abdul want to say anything? And about translation, you know, any translation at the end of the day is a translation. Correct? Any translation, no matter what. And as long as it's not a, tra is a translation, it's not perfect. As long as it is translation, it is not perfect. So the one which is written by the church father, that is the book, is the source, and any translation does not match, we will reject it. And I assure you that there's no translation is perfect. Will never be. Because simply, you see, a translation always fit, uh, fit with culture, but doesn't fit with the original culture, which is this book written with. Like when you when you read in the book of John, the Logos. Logos is something very well known for those who they are Greek. But for other nations, they don't know what does that mean. So for somebody who is a Greek, who study philosophy, he do not need really to make introduction for it. But for someone else, you need to do introduction. So every book is written in different language, written in different way, for a reason. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, and remember, I am not a Bible scholar. I cannot claim to be even close. But the, the, the beautiful thing about our book, uh, it's good for somebody he don't know much. It's good for somebody he knows a lot. This is why when they, they ask Jesus, why you speak in parables? Or what is the point of those parables? He made it clear so people they can understand, so he can open the eyes of people. So a person who is a farmer, he will enjoy it, he will love it, he will learn from it. 
A person who is a philosopher, he will go deep in it. A person who is a thinker, he will think it twice and three and four, and you will love it even more. So it doesn't matter how big your level, how high or how low, this book is book for everybody. Not like the stupid Quran, where we read a verse and then you will find there's a billion interpretation and none of the interpretation agree with the other interpretation. Every Muhammad and he give you different interpretation. But if you go and read the parables of Jesus, you do not need interpretation of anyone. Jesus he did not require you to have a PhD or to be a cleric or to be a scholar to understand a simple story. This is why he made them so simple. So you can be a person who never been in school we don't even maybe know how to write your name. Still, you love it and you enjoy it and you can practice the story. So we have, uh, you know, we have a huge difference between uh, our book and their book. Same time, if you ask the Muslims, like if you go and search here in this book in front of us called Quran, it says Israel. But there is nowhere it says, who is this guy, Israel? Who is Israel? Ask any Muslim. Here we go. We have Muslims in the chat. Hey, Muslims, who is Israel? Nowhere in this book it says, who is this guy? Okay, how we will know then? If this is a book sent by God, shouldn't this God tell the people, especially they are not Jews, especially they have no idea what that word means? Shouldn't he introduct, or let's say, uh, a good introduction? Suddenly, in chapter 240, the name Israel appear. Okay, who is this guy? But if you go in the Bible, you will find there is an introdu introduction. There is, a, there is a story told by details. Who is this guy? Why his name changed? Where he is, where he even where he lived, where he grew, what he did. Here there's nothing. Who is this guy? And what Israel mean? You don't know why? Because this name is a theft. When Ahmad Didat was making an, a fun of this name, actually not the name, he was making fun of Jacob struggling with God. But the idiot he just made fun of the Quran. Because those Abdul do not know that the word Israel mean struggle with God. The second you accept the name, that's when you accept the story. So when the Quran called Jacob Israel without telling us who is Israel, that means the Quran accept that this person he did what he did with God. Do you see how silly the stupid Quran is? If you ask the Muslim as an example, what the word Messiah mean? Not a single Muslim knows. They give you actually the most funny answers. One of them is the Messiah was called the Messiah because he have a flat feet. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this? Or because he used to wipe uh, uh, people with oil. Every Muslim cleric, he give you a different answer. Why? Because this is a name, is a stolen. They don't know what it means. What Isa mean? Okay, what Maryam mean? They don't know. What David mean? They don't know. Abraham, even the word Satan, they don't do you even know where Satan is coming from? They don't know. Uh, as an example, the Quran says Iblis. Go check and see where the word Iblis coming from. <laughs> Why Allah He chose this word? It's a theft. In Arabic, it says Iblis. Why Allah is calling him Iblis? Is that an Arabic name, the original name of Mr. Satan? In Islam? Or this is a theft from other belief? Or the word Shaitan, Satan? 
if this Quran, remember, this Quran supposedly is written before time. This Quran is written before we are all created. So those names proving Allah to be a fraud. Why Allah is saying that the book of Jesus is called Injil when Injil is a Greek word? Was Jesus sent to the Greek people? This is the, alone is enough to prove Quran is a fraud. Because the stupid Muhammad, he heard that the Christian, the Arabic Christian, they called the Bible Injil. But this is a Greek word for the Greek book. So the silly Muhammad, he said, okay, Allah, he sent down the Injil, but that will make a horrible problem because Muslim, they claim that Isa was sent to the, the Jews, the Hebrews. So why he was sent to the Hebrews and his book is in Greek? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you are sent to the German and your book in Chinese, the title of your book in Chinese. But the city Muhammad, he did not understand that this word is a Greek word. And if you want to say that Isa was sent to the Jews, then he should come with better name which is a Hebrew, because he was sent to the Jews. If you ask the Muslim, what Torah mean? They don't know. Okay, Allah called it the Torah. Don't Allah knows what the Torah mean? Shouldn't Allah tell his prophet what the word Torah mean? When we say Torah, we don't know. So what this guy he knew? So everything in Islam is a theft. This is why we say to the Christians, remember carefully, there's no names really in the Bible. There's description of people. There is description of people. Every name belongs to a story. And every story belongs to a name. So when you say Yeshua, you don't mean a name. You mean something, a person, what he can do. When you say the Messiah, you don't you are not even using a name, you are using a description of a title of a glory stuff he is going to do. When Muhammad uh, can you show us uh, you just search for in Google, my friend. You want me to do everything for you? Search where the word in uh, 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 Injil is coming from. This is a Greek word. Enjoy, go and Google in two seconds. You want me to do everything for you? This is why you say angelic and church. You're saying this is, this is a Greek word. It's not a secret. <laughs> Especially the Quran confirmed that Allah, he never sent the messenger except in the tongue of his people. Never. And here you ask yourself how Muhammad will be a messenger for all mankind like in Indonesia or Pakistan or etc., when the Quran should be only for the Arab, because the Quran confirmed that we never send a messenger. Except in the tongue of his people. So what? Uh, what is the tongue of the people of Jesus? Greek, based on this verse? And this is verse alone, by the way, full of stupidity, because isn't it the Quran says that Allah, he sent Moses to the Pharaoh? So do Moses have a Torah in the old Egyptian too? If Allah will never send the messenger except to a person from the people, was Moses from the Egyptian? He's not. Did he deliver a message in their language? What is the book? 
in the language of the Egyptian. In this case, Musa was sent two messages and he is from two nations. And not only that, <laughs> the verse here says, then Allah mislead whom who he wills and he guide who he will. Do you see it? So Allah, he sent messengers with books and then he mislead. So who is the devil? Ah, this guy, he is saying, I am re me presenting. Uh, misinterpret uh, misinterpreting, okay. Stupid. So do you see the stupidity here? Does it say in the front of your eyes? Then Allah mislead. So Allah, he sent to every nation a messenger and then he mislead those people. How stupid is that? If Allah is the one who mislead the people, so who is the one who will guide them? Jesus. Are we following? If Allah is the one who mislead them, and this is the Muslim translation. In Arabic it says, فَيُضِلُّ اللَّهَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ So Allah deceive who he wish, and he guide who he wish. فَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَشَاءَ وَيُهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءَ So Allah deceive who he will, here in the Muslim translation saying mislead, which is not accurate by the way, it is deceive. So Allah he deceive who he will, and he guide who he will. So Allah, he deceived, Jesus, he guide. And how you can be the guide and the deceiver at the same time? And the funny, he is adding the word he mislead just after he send, saying, I send messengers. All right. Anyone have a question? Yeah, exactly. What is the difference between Allah and Shaitan then? We just made a, a video a few days ago, we spoke about, right? What is the difference between Shaitan and Allah? Nothing. Actually, according to the Quran, Shaitan himself is a victim of Allah. Read carefully. <laughs> Look at the first translation. It says, because you have sent me astray, surely I will sit wait against them. The Muslim, they say Shaitan he is talking. All right, but in Arabic it says, "Qala fabima aghwaytani." The word riwaya mean you drove me into lust. You tempted me with lust. Because you did that to me, I'm going to seek revenge from the people who worship you. So, Shaitan is a victim. Shaitan himself is a victim. The one who sent him astray is Allah. Do you see it? Yeah, according to the Quran, Shaitan is a victim, as you see. Actually, Shaitan not only a victim, the Quran confirmed that Shaitan is a big victim because Allah, he, you know, he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam. Allah got upset from Shaitan, but Shaitan is not an angel in Islam. Shaitan is a genie. In Christianity, angel is not a demon, and he is not a genie. The 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 the, the Satan, I mean, 
he's a foreign angel in Islam no in Islam the shaitan is a genie so when the stupid Allah he says in the Quran he ordered all the angels to bow down except Iblis he refused but Iblis is not an angel why he would bow down anyway this is a chapter 7 verse number 16 All right. I mean, the whole story is stupid. Look here, look here. Uh, and when we say to the angels, bow down to Adam, okay. But you said that to the angels. Why Shaitan he will bow down? It's like saying all cats same yo, and the dog he refused. But he did not. He is not a cat. You said cats. <laughs> Do you see the stupidity? You said all cats. What the dog have to do with it? So Allah, he said to the angels, bow down. Shaitan, he refused. For a person who do not know that Shaitan is not an angel in Islam, you might get confused. You might think, okay, well, Satan is one of the angels. In Islam, he is not. In Islam, he is a genie. So why he should bow down? And the idea of bowing down, all of it is stupid. The Muslim, they say, in Islam, we've been taught to bow down only to God. Here we go from the beginning. Allah himself is ordering angels to bow down to a sinner. His name is Adam. And why? Because they accuse him, accuse Adam, he would do mischievement. Anyway, our video is getting longer and it's getting really late here so i want to say thank you guys for being here i hope we learned something good we are happy to our friend uh Muqtada, the one who called us and uh i hope he did watch the video to explain to him about the names my friend we don't follow names we follow god and god is not a name for there is no name can describe him there's no name the same as the Messiah, the Lord, no grave can contain him and no cross can hold him. His glory is bigger than any names. We are not the Muslims who need we and our God, he need we to make himself glorified. The Lord, he glorified himself by his act. Everything you see around you is a glorifying God. And the Lord, he says, the Father glorified the Son, and so the Son glorified the Father. It's not a name will glorify God. Otherwise, people, they can choose to themselves the best names ever you can imagine. But that will not glorify you. For names mean, mean nothing unless you fit with them. And there's no human being fit with his name. All people, they've been given good names, but all of us, we are sinners. All of us. You call your son good. You call yourself a son uh, 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 smart. You call him, etc. But reality is not really, the names does not describe you. This is why in the Bible, there's no names. The description of life story, description of what those people will present. What is God preparing for us? In the same time, we have a free will. That's why the Lord, he says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So it's up to you to do his will or not. So God, he prepared for us, prepare salvation. But still, it's up to us to accept or to reject. This Quran is just a stupid silly book. Meanless. God, he is ordering angels to bow down to a man. And why? Because they said this man is going to do mischievement and it turned to be true and Allah is wrong. And not only that, 
Allah he accused angels to be liars how come Allah did not kick the angels out of heaven <laughs> when the Quran says tell me the names of those things if you are truthful didn't Allah accuse the, the, the angels to be a bunch of liars and if they are not truthful, so how the angels will deliver Quran to Muhammad? How somebody is not truthful, you can trust him to deliver the Quran. Do you see it? In the top of that, this God who described the angels to be a bunch of liars, he punished Shaitan. But he is not the one who accused Adam he would do mischievement. He have nothing to do with the story. Which means Allah is not just. I mean a person, he was, his mouth is shut. He have nothing to do with the story of Adam. He did not accuse Adam of anything. And just accuse Adam that he would do something bad. Allah, he taught the names of to, to Adam. And he then he asked him to tell him the names if he, they are truthful. And this is supposedly how we get them busted, which is very stupid. But the shaitan is just not saying anything. He did nothing wrong. Allah ordered the angels to bow down. So why he is upset from shaitan for not bowing down? The whole story is a stupid. It's a chaos. It's a dummy. And then the angel who delivered the Quran is not a truthful as you see in the Quran. So how truthful the Quran is if the one who delivered the message is not a truthful. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, Mr. Actoras Boga saying, Christian Prince defend the Quran because he is Satan. My friend, it's your Quran defending the Quran. You are an idiot. It's your Quran saying that Allah, he misled Shaitan. It's your Quran saying that Shaitan is a victim of Allah. It's your Quran saying that Allah, he ordered angels to bow down to a human. And not only just a human, he is a sinner. His name is Adam. And he was kicked out from heaven. And not only that, your stupid God, when Shaitan, he refused to bow down, Allah get, kicked him out of heaven. He kicked him out of heaven. Then how, the, how Shaitan, he came back? Read carefully. When when Allah he ordered angels to bow down, and Shaitan he refused. It was after Allah he kicked Shaitan out of heaven. How Shaitan get back? Any Muslim can tell me? Chapter 7, verse number 13. Because Shaitan, he refused to bow down. Allah, he said to him, get out, get down. Okay, so now he's get down. Can you, you know, when Allah, he says, be, is going to be, right? So Allah, he said to him, get down. Did, did Shaitan get down? Go down three verses, you will see Shaitan is still in heaven. Because after Allah, he kicked him out, Shaitan, he whispered to Adam and Eve, where in heaven? <laughs> this is a book of God? How he said to him, get down. And then how after that he went to Adam and Eve in heaven to deceive them. Any Muslim can tell us? 
maybe when Allah he order uh, order shaitan to get down shaitan he did not he told him I'm going to sue you in the court he maybe he said to him get lost isn't you Muslim he says if Allah wants something to, to, to happen he say B is going to be but as you see Allah he said to him get down not only get down actually he said to him get down and he said minha. he cursed him with shame And then after Allah, he orders shaitan to get down. Then Allah, he says to Adam and Eve to go and live in heaven. And then suddenly shaitan is in heaven again. <laughs> Do you see what happened when you have a stupid author? I mean, the guy is out. How he get inside the heaven? Especially the heaven of Islam is in the sky. It's literally in the sky. Shaitan now is in the earth. How Shaitan went back? If you remember the story of Muhammad and the angel Jibreel, there's seven doors and seven gates, and they will ask you where you're going. And the Quran says, if Shaitan tried to go out of the heaven, Allah will shoot him. Hmm. Yeah, well, the Muslim they believe that the genie, there is genie. They are uh, actually this is a topic we should mention maybe in different a different video, uh, different different uh, uh, topic. But uh, uh, Muhammad in his book, he have a big purple. When Muhammad he said that his God said. Are you going to follow Shaitan and his children, his, his kids? But he kicked only one Shaitan from the heaven. The Muslims, how many Shaitan Allah kicked from heaven? So how Shaitan he got babies now? You see, Adam, he was kicked out with Eve. Iblis was kicked alone. <laughs> There's only one genie was kicked out from heaven. His name is Iblis. So now in the earth we have one genie. His name is Iblis. So how the Quran says he have babies now? And here you will see the Muslims they start their in, in like their their in, innovation so they say that Allah he created the penis in the right thigh of the leg of shaitan and he created the vagina in the left thigh of shaitan then he shake his legs and he put this inside that and he do nikah to himself and then he lay 10 eggs and from every egg, there is 70 male shaitan and female shaitan, they come out. And I challenge any Muslim to say I'm lying. All of this story is made up just to cover the stupidity here that shaitan have babies. I stop lying? Why you don't call me and uh, challenge me? Actoros. Guys, in the front of everybody, why this guy don't call me and uh, challenge me to show it? Hmm? Actually, even your prophet, he, he, he agreed, you know, he said that the shaitan, he lay eggs. Don't you know? Here we go. Ah, look at the translation. They took away the word eggs. In Arabic it says, In here, it's gone. There is no, there is no eggs. 
there's no eggs are coming out uh, there's no babies coming from the eggs you see this you see that you see the corruption unbelievable if you copy let me do this just to show you how the Muslim they try to hide the madness of their stupid prophet we will use Google translation all right so remember the one in the left is the Muslim translation the one in the right is the Arabic the original what I would do click translate let us see does it say that shaitan he lay eggs <laughs> right <laughs> don't be the first to enter the market oh what happened why it went back to Arabic translate there we go don't be the first to enter the market or the last one because the shaitan eggs the devil, uh, uh, the devil eggs. They they give their chick. Do you see it? But where in Arabic it says in, in in English translation it says that it's gone. It's gone. There's no lay eggs. There's no chick. There's nothing. This is why it's very important if we're gonna fight this garbage religion. You need to know Arabic because their translation is a lie. Is nothing but a lie. And the one who is saying to me, stop lying, you can call me right now before we leave and challenge me to show you the reference. And I will make you read it yourself. Right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I guess we have Abdul. You know, the Muslims, the, what is lovely about them. You talk about tomatoes, the Muslim, they try to change uh, the topic. They are so desperate to change the topic because it is very embarrassing. Like we have a guy, he's, he called himself Isaiah. Uh, you know, uh, Isaiah, uh, why you don't call me and ask me the question about the Bible? Isaiah 40 first of all you are a Muslim don't come here with a, such a name you don't even know what Isaiah mean same time potato why you don't call me right now and ask me the same question you just gave in the chat and I will make everybody laugh at you is that fair guys why you cannot be a hero and call me right now and tell me the verse you want to talk about from the Bible? And everybody will laugh at you in two seconds. He mentioned that in the Bible they speak about the edge of the earth. It's in your Quran, you donkey. The pillars of the heaven, it's in your Quran, you donkey. When they try to make fun of you, those are idiots. They do not know what they have in their books. Are you there? It is Allah who raised the heaven without pillar that you can see. Meaning it has pillar, but you cannot see. <laughs> and you can read the interpretation. According to the Quran, there's a mountain, it's called, it's an azure mountain surrounding the earth, and the color of the sky is take the color from it. 
According to the stupid Quran, Allah, he left up the heaven in the top of pillars that we cannot see. And he placed mountains in the top of the earth. Do you see it? Every single, every single statement of those is a disaster. According to the Quran, the sky was in the top of the earth and Allah, he lifted up. But is the sky really lifted up? Who is the stupid when I believe in this? We are inside the space and the sky is not lifted up. Who is holding the sky from falling us? Allah. Chapter 22, verse number 65. So Allah, he rift up the sky, and now he is holding the sky from falling us. Who is who hold the heaven from falling on the earth except by his permission? Why? Because in different verse in the Quran, Muhammad, he says that the sky is a roof. The Muslim will say to you, oh, this is the atmosphere. Abdul, and that roof is where is the stars. And when Allah, he says, protected roof, he's talking about if shaitan, he tried to go out of the earth or a human, Allah will shoot his ass with fire. The same verse, the Muslim, they say this is about atmosphere why Jesus enjoyed to be kissed by a woman who will uh, 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 arose yoga you are a son of muta and we don't have such a verse in the Bible get out of here go and follow the muta prophet where in the Bible it says women they were kissing Jesus filthy son of muta you don't, you must, you know, those people, they have no dignity. They are so angry. They can't refute us and they fabricate lies. Even your stupid Quran, chapter 19, verse 19 says Jesus is holy. Even your stupid donkey Quran. When the angel came to Mary, he says, I am here to give you the glad tidings of a holy son. So why you are a filthy, trashy person? You are angry. I understand. You cannot refute us. I understand. You try to change the topic. I understand. But as you see, your religion is a garbage. And we have our Skype open for the last how many hours? Not a single Muslim there to call me to debate me. Why? Because you know that you have the most stupid cult ever. Otherwise, your Muslim will be lined up to call me. If I am a person who have a blue eyes, I don't speak Arabic, I am not an Arab, I am an American or a British. You must then will be calling me like, like crazy. But in front of me, you are terrified. You are terrified. So you are willing to insult a person. You must then claim that you respect him, that he's a prophet. It was your prophet who women they are. Actually, I can't say women kissing him. He is filthy. Nobody want to kiss him. He was forcing women to sleep with him. When Muhammad, he tried to force a decent woman to sleep with him, do you know what she said to him? A queen like me will go with a filthy like you? If you don't believe me, search it right now in Google or call me right now to show it to you. She described him as a suqa. A suqa, not only filthy, the garbage of the garbage of the garbage of the society. Imagine how brave this woman is. She refused to sleep with this filthy man. No. <coughs> not only that. Do you know that Muhammad, he have a wife, she left Islam, and she moved with someone, he is a Christian. 
Do you know that? Do you know that one of the wives of Muhammad, she left Islam and she went with, she, she ran away with the guy who's a Christian? <laughs> I mean, what a shame. The wife of Muhammad leaving Islam and she is going with the man he is a Christian. Can you believe it? The more you read about this mad Muhammad, the more you see how people, how much people they hated him, disrespected him, and women they are running away from him. Yes, exactly. She lived with a Christian dude. She lived with a Christian dude and she married him. I mean, there's tons of information, you know. You see, when you sit with me here, you have to give me a reason to talk about things. Otherwise, we can repeat the same things. I mean, tomorrow we can say this, you know. You have to, like, a, I am like a library, and you need to touch the book. Or give me a reason to open the book. So, this is why you hear things you never maybe heard before. Yeah, well, they say that she did not, you know, but anyway, uh, what you can say. Do we have any Abdul? Any Mohammedan? <clears throat> There's tons of stories. They bring nothing but shame to Muhammad. Let us look in Skype. <coughs> Somebody is asking, what is the name of the woman she took? Her name is Qat uh, Qatila. This is one of the, actually, there's many stories, but you know, this is one of them. Her name is Qatila bin Tuqais. But there's more, more stories of more women, obviously, they run away from Muhammad. According to the Muslims, this woman Qatila, she even married uh, 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 the son of Abu Jahl. And the other women, let me try to remember the name. I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> let me search. This woman, she went to, okay. <clears throat> you see, sometimes like, you know, the, the name just, just uh, fly from your head. Uh, but maybe like, just remind me next time and we will try to find it. There's tons of, of stories about this filthy man, Muhammad. <clears throat> the Dawa team, my friend, those Dawa team, uh, is that the same, the, the, the F Dawa? We made a video, we, we show everybody how they are a bunch of kids. However, listen, if any Muslim from any Islamic channel, they go live, and they are willing to take my call when I am live, I will be happy to do so. What do you think, guys? I let everybody love. All what they need, give us your Skype, and I will call you. 
team, half team, full team, we will make them shish kebab. All right. Hmm. Yeah, so guys, women, they were kissing Jesus by kissing his feet. <laughs> yeah, Abdul, you just prove us, prove to us that Jesus being worshipped, because people don't kiss feet of a human unless they are worshipping them. If those are a human like them, so she kissed his feet. She's worshipping him. She's not kissing Jesus. You are a stupid son of Muta. I like your prophet. And the Muslim, they say to you, where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. Where he said that? As you see, Jesus being worshipped wherever he go. Uh, when a person enter your house and you bow down in front of him and not only you bow down you kiss his feet that is not only an act of worship that is an act of a person who is willing to obey his lord for no matter what It is the true submission to God. So when the Muhammadan they say to you, where Jesus said, I am God, worship me, they are posting the verses for us. A woman, she want to kiss a man, she will not kiss his feet. A woman who was worshipping Jesus is bowing down in front of him and kissing his feet. And me, myself, I will be so honored to be that person who is kissing the feet of Jesus. It's a dream. I wish I was there. So while we Christians, we were kissing the feet of Jesus, Muhammad, he was asking women to give their vagina to him. Muhammad was making verses, any believing woman she want to offer herself to the Prophet. So the filthy you, because you are filthy like your Prophet, even the act of worship, you made it sexual, you filthy. When the Quran and the interpretation says, if his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the prophet can have her immediately. That is your prophet. That is your prophet. When your Quran says that any believing woman, she offer herself to the prophet to if her, and the Muslim delight to say to marry her. And it says, it's a privilege only to you. What kind of God he give a privilege to a man to if women? And this is a privilege. Do you see the stupidity? A privilege? Isn't it obvious that this is made by the filthy Muhammad? Giving himself a privilege about sex? Why a person serving God, he need a privilege for sex? You tell me. Isn't it enough that all the women he have already? Why he need more? Privilege? There's a video made by a Muslim says, well, the prophet, what he got from this? He was suffering. The prophet was fighting everybody. He was suffering. He, he was suffering. Look at the suffering. He got the fifth of the booty. 
the fifth of Allah, the fifth of Muhammad. He got the best of the booty, the biggest screen TV, the best of the women from the booty, which means beautiful women. And the top of that, any women she can offer herself to sleep with Muhammad. And it is a privilege to you. <coughs> In the top of that, Abdul, if you try to insult Jesus, that means you are insulting your stupid Quran because your stupid Quran confirmed that Jesus is holy. Did Allah make a mistake? Look like he did. Because while your stupid Quran saying that Jesus is holy, the stupid you is spending his day trying to prove not. So which one of you is saying the truth? Do you see it? Any Mohammedan? Any Muhammadan can explain to us why Jesus is holy in the Quran and Muhammad is sinner? Here we go, I will put the two verses next to each other. And not only that, Allah is asking other God, his name is Allah, wishing that he will forgive the sin of Muhammad. Chapter 48, verse number 2. Forgive your community? What community? Look at this guy. The sin of Muhammad became your community. <laughs> that is the, that is different different level of a scam. Who is the translator? Hold on. Shakir, forgiving the sin of Muhammad became forgiving your community. That's deep. That is truly deep, brother. We changed the translator. Look what happened. Look what happened. We just changed the translator. May Allah forgive your sin in the past and the future. The word sin became community. Nice community, brother. Right? Right. Uh, any Muhammadan? <clears throat> Nobody? <clears throat> okay, look like we are out of, uh, we, we are not getting lucky, but it's okay. Well, somebody, he says, remember, uh, Jesus did not say to the women to bow down. Okay, so? But Jesus, he did not say to her, don't bow down. He did not even stop her. She already bowed down in front of him. And not only that, Jesus, he spoke to Simon, and he said to him, uh, do you see this woman? I came to your house, he did not even give me water to wash my feet. But she made my feet wet by her tears. So this woman, she is not only bowing down, she's bowing down and she is crying. And then Jesus, he said to her, go and your sin is forgiven. So Jesus here, not only the women she bowed down to worship him, crying with tears, Jesus, he said to her, your sin is forgiven. The Quran says, and who forgives sin except Allah? <laughs> who forgives sin except Allah? 
But as you see, chapter 48, verse number 2, Allah cannot forgive sin. He's asking other Allah to forgive sin of Muhammad, wishing. But if we go in the Bible, let me open those verses. And you can read. And then he turned to the women and said into Simon, See uh, those, see the, the, this woman? I entered into the, your house and you did not even give me water or to, even to wash my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears. And she wiped them with her hair. So the Muslim, when he say, what he is saying, he is just being a fraud. The woman, she is bowing down in front of the Lord, crying and weeping, seeking forgiveness. And how we will know that this is the, the, the main purpose? Read carefully. He said to him, you gave me no kiss, but this woman, since I came, she kissed my feet. So she cried over her feet, his feet. She bowed down in front of him, obviously. And she is weeping, and her tears is all over his feet. And then he said to this woman, he said to her, your sin is forgiven. This is what she is begging for. The Jews, when they saw this woman, she is doing that. They said, if this person is a prophet, because this is what they wanted to see, Jesus, he should know that this woman is a sinner. And then the Jews right away they said, Who is this person who is forgiving also sin? <laughs> so while Jesus was forgiving sin of people, Allah was asking other Allah, wishing Muhammad's sin to be forgiven in the past and in the future. Do you see it? So this is our Lord, my friend, and this is your Lord. Your Lord is asking other Lord, maybe it may forgive your sin, may. Jesus did not say, may the Lord forgive your sin. Jesus said to her, go and your sin is forgiven. And the Jews, they said to themselves right away, who is this person who also forgives sin? So I'm very grateful for the Muslim who mentioned this verse because here you see that you have to be truthful from your heart. You have to worship the Lord. You have to wipe his feet with your tears, the tear of repent. And the Lord, he is loving. He is merciful. The same as you wipe your, his feet with your tears, he will wipe your sin because you are repenting from your heart. So those verses not only show us how amazing the authority of Jesus over sin, which means over hell and heaven, because the one who forgives sin is the only one who is in charge of hell and heaven. The one who forgives sin is God himself, because all sin is made against God no matter what kind of sin. And nobody have the right to forgive a sin of a man except God himself. On the other hand, we see the God of Islam, he cannot even forgive the sin of Muhammad. He's making a wish. So with those great verses from the Bible, I want to say to you, thank you all for being here. Feel free to cut this video, make it shorter as you wish, make topics as you wish. Don't forget to subscribe to my other channel, Arabian prophet because we will start going there soon and this this channel here will be going to sleep for some time so if you don't see us here remember we will be in the Arabian prophet channel I want to say thank you and I pray to the Lord that all the Muslims who they are angry because the truth is making them angry I say to you this is a good sign be angry because 
you feel that you are following a false prophet from your heart be angry for anger is a clear sign that you are in disability my skype is open for many hours not even one of you there to call me prove me wrong why because you know I am not wrong otherwise you will never stop calling to bring victory to Allah but you know that your Allah is fake and you cannot bring victory for him maybe you can do it by terror but you my friend the Bible says fear not and we fear no one fear not we don't fear Jesus said it clearly fear not those who destroy the body but fear those who destroy the soul always we will be victorious even when we are dead we are victorious for we are following the Messiah and you are following a child molester how in the world even you accept such a man to be your best man if this is your best man so who is the worst of you what a disgusting cult thank you God bless you all and see you soon again Christ is Lord and Islam is a scam and we prove it every day thank you I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him.